Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to our Q&A video. We have some awesome topics to discuss and loads of eye candy, so let's jump right in, shall we? Starting with the first question, what do you think about the new updated Marmont that no longer has the hearts on the back? I was so surprised to see this and I actually appreciate the different leather patterns on the bags. But when I saw that the heart was gone, I thought of you right away. Thoughts? Not gonna lie, I was grinning like an idiot when I got that email and I was <laughs> I was scrolling through the bags. I was so, so excited. Of course, they still have uh, the other, the regular old um, Marmonts as well and they have it in the antique gold hardware and whatnot. But anywho, uh, Gucci recently launched their, their newest line from Marmont and they added a different twist to it. They have, of course, a variety of different bags to pick from. Which I, which I think is great. Uh, this new line, if you will, is available in four different colors. They have it in black. I think it's called rose beige, white, and gray. Uh, this Marmont line has it in the antique silver, and I think they are fabulous. At first, when I saw the different leathers, I didn't know how I felt about it. I was like, mm, I don't know. I'll tell you what, though. I prefer the different leathers over that heart. We all know how I feel about that, about that heart. I thought, I despise that heart. <laughs> I remember I remember someone on a previous Minx Monday, someone said, what did that heart ever do to you? <laughs> because I felt like I had such animosity towards it. it. It's not that, it's just I felt that it really ended up aging the bag, but those are just my two cents. Uh, but I still, thought, I still thought that the Marmont line in general and what it brought to the table was amazing. I've always said that, I just, I hated that heart. Uh, but anywho, with this new with this new collection, uh, of course you do have the different leathers and I didn't know how I felt about it. I definitely lean more towards liking it. Uh, I think it gives it a type of freshness that I felt that this line needed. And uh, I especially love the silver hardware and that gray is amazing. The small flap or the small uh, Marmont in the gray with the silver hardware I think is absolutely gorgeous. I just it's it's a beautiful shade of gray it's not you know like this dingy gray it's not it's not too dark i think that the hardware and that color just complement each other so, so well. And actually all four of the colors that it's available in, I think are amazing. So I, I'm, I'm stoked. <laughs> I'm really, really, really stoked. Uh, of course, with a small size, it retails for 2,300-ish, maybe closer to 2,400. So it doesn't have a crazy price point either, of course, just like the other uh, Marmonts, uh, the other flap Marmonts, but um, I love the variety. I love the different, I love that they just have from a small, like a small super mini to a larger uh, tote with this type of, uh, with this type of detail and the two different leathers. Uh, I, I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's great. What do you guys think? Are you a fan of this new Marmont line? What do you think about the color? Okay, maybe if you're not a fan of the different leathers, do you like the different colors that this is available in? Let us know in the comment section down below because yeah. I, I gotta admit, I'm also like side stalking <laughs> the gray small flap because I am that crazy about it. Uh, will I end up going for it? I don't think so. I'm, I, I, no, I don't think so, but I'm definitely like, hmm. <laughs> I've added it to my bag maybe more than one occasion. Okay, maybe like four or five times I've added it to my cart. I haven't gone through with it, so I, it's not like I have it here and I'm secretly hiding it from you guys. Definitely not, but I'm, I'm stoked. <laughs> I'm stoked to say the least. But I would love to know, what do you guys think about the new Heartless Marmont? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, would you consider buying a leather handbag from Louis Vuitton now that Chanel prices are higher? If so, which one and why? Ooh. <laughs> You know, I'll be honest with you, I'm still really apprehensive about buying another leather handbag from Louis Vuitton to add to my collection. Now, contrary to popular belief, I have had leather handbags from the Fashion House. If you guys have been watching my channel since the beginning, many of you know that I did have the Alma PM and Vernie in two different colors. I had it in the Noir Magnetic as well as the Cerise, both beautiful handbags. Of course, I no longer own either of them. I've also had uh, small leather goods in Epi, Vernie, and Empreinte. I've gotten rid of all of those except for the key pouch and the Rose Ballerine and Empreinte leather. That's the only thing left. Other than that, my 
my entire Louis Vuitton collection consists of canvas. And a few years ago, I thought about going for the Neo Vivienne in the color khaki. It was a beautiful bag. I loved the color. Of course, I ended up uh, deciding against it. And it really came down to the fact that I didn't have the best experience with any of their leather goods, whether it was a handbag or their small leather goods. Uh, I'm not trying to take away from them either. I do think that their, their, their leather handbags are beautiful, but just the experiences that I've had before, it doesn't really give me the warm and fuzzies to want to move in that direction. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, when it comes to Louis Vuitton's canvas, I feel like they do it better than anybody in the business. I do prefer their older pieces for their canvas, but even now, I can definitely appreciate their, uh, their canvas in general. But their leather, I, I just, I don't know, I'm not really, it, it kind of, the experiences before it kind of hinders me from again wanting to move in that direction uh but i will have to admit there is one bag there is one leather bag that i feel is incredibly beautiful i think it's the most beautiful out of their entire leather lineup and that is the capucine and the capucine of course is classic to the louis vuitton fashion house as the classic flap is to chanel and i love i love the story behind the capucine i love that there is a variety of different colors and different sizes I do really like it in the size BB. Uh, I love it in the color red, and of course I also like it in white. No surprise there on either one of them. And if I was, if I was to get over that, whatever it is that I have towards their, their leather handbags, I would probably end up going for a capucine in the size BB in either of those two colors. I definitely wouldn't get it uh, brand new from the boutique. I would get it on the pre-love market. And the reason why I would get it on the pre-love market is because unfortunately, even though the capucine is what it is to Louis Vuitton, uh, it doesn't end up, it doesn't really end up holding its resale value as well as I think it should. Uh, I said should, kind of weird, right? <laughs> should. Uh, if you look on the pre-love market, you can see many of them that are about 50% less than they are retail. Uh, of course, it depends on the on the qual or not the quality on the crafts, not the craftsmanship. My goodness, on the condition. Uh, but I I would definitely go for it on the pre-love market. I've seen a few of them for like 2,600. Um, at most, I've seen them for 3,200 in those two colors that I was talking about. Uh, but I, I do think that that is by far the best looking leather handbag that they have in their lineup. Um, not again, not saying that they don't have beautiful leather handbags. Please, uh, you know, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying because they are absolutely gorgeous. Just for me personally and the way I feel about them, I'm not the craziest uh, for their for their leather handbags, but I can definitely appreciate what they bring to the table. And uh, they do have stunning silhouettes, uh, but I I really do love. I really do love the capucine. I think it is a gorgeous, gorgeous bag. Very simple, but it also has a little bit more, it has some bells and whistles, but in the right places. It's not this overly detailed handbag and it has uh, quite a bit of function to it as well. So only time will tell if I decide to move in that direction. And I also want to let you guys know really quickly why I decided to get rid of the majority of my leather goods from Louis Vuitton. It really came down to wear and tear, especially with the vernis, because vernis, I think it's beautiful and Louis Vuitton has come out with some amazing colors for that material, but uh, I do consider it to be very delicate. Uh, number one, I don't like to see I don't like to see fingerprints on the clear coating. It drives me nuts, uh, but you have to be really careful with print. You also have to be very careful with, um, with the sun hitting it or with light hitting it because the clear coating can turn very cloudy. It can also turn pretty yellow. So those were things that I factored into how I would see myself wearing them as time went uh, as time went on, but uh, the pieces that I had were absolutely beautiful. There's no denying that. But I just didn't want to. I didn't want to deal with the wear and tear that they were having, and I really didn't want to baby them either because of the materials that they were. Next question: If you could walk into Hermes and just buy a bag, any bag at all, minus all of the game playing, which would you buy? Hands down, the Garden Party. Although when it comes to the Hermes Garden Party, it's not a matter of having to play any type of games as you would with the Burke and the Kelly or the Constance. With this one, it comes down to availability in the specific color that I am asking for because I have gone into boutiques and they do have other colors. 
but again, not the color that I am specifically looking for. I think that that bag is so beautiful. I love the structure. I love the simplicity. It's a tote. It's right up my alley. And I've actually had this bag on my wish list for a few years now. Uh, I definitely prefer it in the size 30. Um, I like it in the 36, but I definitely prefer it in the 30. And um, uh, like I said before, I've gone into boutiques and I haven't been able to to find it in uh, in the red that I am looking for. Because I've toyed with the colors, I've thought about going for it in blue. I definitely don't want it in blue. I've also thought about going for it in the bamboo. The bamboo is gorgeous, but I don't necessarily think it's me. Uh, my number one choice has always been uh, has always been red, so I think <laughs> I think that's gonna be the one. I've looked for it on the pre-love market, of course to no avail, because the ones that I've seen on the pre-love market they're either way too overpriced or they're in really, really bad shape. So I haven't, um, I haven't be, been able to find, you know, the exact one that I am looking for. Uh, the craziest thing is that I almost had this happen to me a few years ago or a couple years ago. We were in Las Vegas. I went into the Hermes Boutique and I asked for the garden party in the size 30 in red and they had it there. Uh, and by the way, one of the best experiences I have ever had at any boutique for Hermes. The gentleman was so incredibly uh, thorough. He answered every question. He was very, very nice, but he had the exact garden party that I was looking for, but it was on hold for someone else. And he said, if they don't come back, I think by the end of the day or by tomorrow, I'll give you a call and you can, and you can come and pick it up. Of course, you guys know the outcome because it's not behind me, but uh, it almost happened. <laughs> I was so excited, uh, but um, I ended up drowning my sorrows at Chanel, but <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but it would absolutely be the garden party. I think it's, I think it's a gorgeous bag. I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's just, it's too simple. It's so blah. It's just a regular boring tote. I definitely don't see that. Uh, I just love how open it is. I love the fact that you can just open it up. It doesn't have any zippers. You guys know how I feel about zippers on totes. I can appreciate them but definitely not my first choice. The color that I want is a classic red uh, that they always seem to have just every time I've asked. They don't, they don't have that color. They've had it at the boutiques. They've had it in black. I've seen it in navy. I've seen it in gold, um, but uh, no red, no red. <laughs> Such a bummer. But if I could walk into Hermes today and say, do you have the garden party in this color, in this size, in this material? and they said yes, I would absolutely snatch that bag up in a, in a minute, um, in a hot second, actually. <laughs> I would end up going for that bag. But what about you guys? If you could walk into Hermes today and ask for any bag at all without having to play any games or anything like that, just any bag, which bag would it be? Let me know in the comment section down below. Next question, do you think the new Speedy 20 will stay a classic? As we talked about in a previous Q&A video, Louis Vuitton recently launched the Speedy 20 in monogram canvas as well as leather. Now the leather is a revamped version from the one that they had years ago. I can't remember the reason why they got rid of the leather one. If you guys do, let us know in the comment section down below. But do I think that the 20 will be a classic? I don't know, I hope so. Of course, only time will tell, but I am very happy that they decided to, uh, to bring this bag back and I'm really happy that that they decided to introduce it in the uh, in the monogram canvas. This bag has been extremely popular with great reason because it's a it's a great size. It's not this itty bitty you know small bag, and it's not this enormous bag either. I think that it has a lot of function. Uh, in the monogram version, of course, it's a little bit smaller than the 25, and I feel it's a lot larger than the Nano Speedy because of course the 20 has the dual zippers. I love the fact that the monogram version does come with a removable strap. I personally think if the strap had been removable, adjustable and leather, I think that would make it a lot more classic than the fabric. I do like the fact that it does come with a removable strap in general because you can end up incorporating other straps and you can really uh, you can really end up uh, personalizing the bag uh, however you see fit. So I think, I think it's great that they decided to do that. I really feel that the Empreinte version has a better chance at becoming a classic over the monogram. And that's because with the Empreinte version, of course, you do get the removable adjustable strap, 
Plus, we've seen that over the years, Louis Vuitton has been focusing more on leather handbags versus their canvas handbags. And hopefully it gets so popular that they decide to introduce it in other materials or in other, uh, or in other canvas prints. I think if they ended up doing that, I think there's a good chance that it'll end up being a uh, that that it'll end up being a classic. At least I'm, I'm crossing my fingers because it's a great bag. Whether you go for the for the canvas, whether you go for the leather, as I said before, I think that it has a lot of function. It's a really really nice silhouette, and um, yeah, I think it would be I think it would be amazing if they decided to incorporate it in other materials and in other prints and just gave uh, more people a chance to add this bag to their collections as well. But as I said before, only time will tell. What do you guys think? Do you think that the Speedy 20 will become a classic to the fashion house? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. When compared, the Louis Vuitton doubles at pochette, which retails for $1,180 here in the States, versus the Louis Vuitton pochette accessoire that retails for $10.50 here in the States, which one would you go for since the pochette accessoire has increased their price to almost double? All right, so the double zip pusha, I know that it's available in a variety of different uh, different colors and different materials. Uh, as far as the one that retails for 1180 with the Damia Ben and the LV in the front, uh, what I really love and appreciate about the double zip is the fact that it does come with a very generous removable strap that you can use crossbody or on your shoulder. I like the fact that you have two different uh, two different little pouches. One of those pouches, of course, does have the credit card slots or those slip pockets, which I think is really nice. That way you don't have to end up carrying a, uh, a card holder and it allows you the chance to, to maximize your space by carrying other small leather goods. And it also has that microfiber lining. So it has a lot going for it. However, between the two, I would still end up picking the push out accessoire, even though it's a little bit less expensive. And I know some people might think that you're getting double the bag with the other one, which essentially you are. Uh, for me personally, I would end up picking this because I love the push out accessoire and its size. I feel like it's a lot more generous than the other two. I feel like the other two pouches. I could be wrong, but I feel like the other two pouches, they're not as, I think it has 1.2 inches in in depth or in, uh, yeah, in depth. And this one has 1.6 because with those, I feel like it can get really bulky really quickly unless you have very narrow or if you have very flat items. Whereas this one, I have been able to carry a lot more than I anticipated and I'm still able to close it up without the zipper getting too, too wonky either. I feel like the zipper in the double zip pochette might get a little bit wonkier than this one. Uh, but even with the pochette accessoire, even though it only has that one compartment, you have a little slip pocket here, but still it's one compartment. With this one, I feel like it has a little bit more versatility. You can also remove this strap and add a different strap. Of course, it's not as generous as the uh, the double zip one, the one that comes with the double zip, and that one is a chain versus this one being leather. Uh, but I just feel like with this one, you can use it as a little pouch inside of your bag, you can use it as a makeup bag, you can use it as a mini handbag. I feel like this one has maybe a little bit more than the other one. Out of all of the double zip pochettes, the one that I personally like the most is the reverse, because that one comes with a removable, adjustable leather strap. And that one gives it a lot more, uh, I feel like gives it a little bit more function than the one with the chain. Uh, but uh, I do think that they're both great. I do think that they offer, they, they both bring a lot to the table. But for me personally, I would uh, I would end up picking the push out accessoire hands down. I think it's a great, great uh, little bag and it has so much versatility. To me, this is another bag that I would end up buying at its current price. I know that uh, in our last Q&A, someone had asked me if I had to start my collection all over, which bags would I, would I add at the current price? And uh, I chose the ones that I chose, but this is also another one that I would end up picking. I paid 500 for it, and I definitely still think that it's worth the 1050 because of the versatility that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but those are just my two cents. I would love to know which one do you guys prefer out of the two? Do you prefer the pochette accessoire or do you prefer the double zip pochette? Or for those of you that have both, which one do you prefer? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. Could you share your thoughts on Fendi? I really like the Fendi first bag. Do you think it'll be a classic or is the peekaboo a safer option? 
All right, so when it comes to Fendi, I am a huge, huge fan of the Fashion House. Uh, of course, now I no longer have any Fendi bags in my collection. I recently uh, ended up getting rid of my Mama Baguette. I was so bummed out, but the hardware started to completely oxidize and uh, it started peeling really, really badly. So I ended up having to get rid of it. And I thought about going for another one, uh, but now they're they're double the price of what I paid for mine. So I um, I wasn't really <laughs> I wasn't really feeling that, but I'm so bummed out that I no longer have it. Uh, but Fendi, I think I think they have some really fun. I think they have some really great silhouettes. I love their leather, especially their Napa leather. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Now, when it comes to the Fendi first, uh, I, I do, it's available in different sizes. I like it in the small. I think it retails for approximately 2,900 ish, maybe 3000. Uh, I like the fact that it, you can incorporate it various ways. You can either use it as a clutch because it does come with a removable shoulder strap or you can use it as a shoulder bag. I love the details that it has. I love the F. I love the shape that it has because I think that it gives it a really, it gives it a very unique uh, design that no other handbag really has from their from their lineup. So I really do appreciate that. I love the fact that it has the signature print on the inside. I am a huge fan of the Fendi First. Uh, and the Peekaboo, of course, I'm a huge fan of, of the Peekaboo. The Peekaboo is classic to the fashion house. And uh, I was really surprised to see <laughs> the price point on the Peekaboo. The last time I looked at it, I think it was 36 or 3700. Now it's like 4200 or 4300 for the many. I was I was very surprised. Uh, but the Peekaboo is tried and true. Uh, it's definitely a uh, it's definitely a classic. It has beautiful leather, especially in that Napa leather. You have a variety that you can pick from, and I think it's a great bag. Do I think that the Peekaboo is a safer option in terms of classic? I do. Do I think that the Fendi First will be a classic? I don't think so. Of course, only time will tell. I do see it sticking around for a couple of years, and then after that being discontinued, and then uh, Fendi coming out with something completely different, a completely different concept. Whereas with the Peekaboo, as I said before, it is a classic to the fashion house. It is a staple. It is tried and true. It's been around for a while now. So if you are looking for a classic bag from Fendi, to add to your collection, I would definitely have to say, between these two, I would definitely have to say the Peekaboo. But if you want something a little bit different, something a little bit with a uh, with a different spin to it, then I would end up going for the Fendi first because I, I love the details that it has. And hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully it does end up uh, standing the test of time and it does become a classic. But I would love to know, for those of you that have the Fendi first or the Peekaboo, let us know how you like these bags in the comment section down below. Next question, are there any other YSL handbags that you plan to add to your collection? I am happy to say that as of right now, I have no intention on adding any Saint Laurent handbags to my collection. However, there is a bag that I wanted to talk about in hopes that maybe one of you guys is also looking at it or that one of you guys has it and we can discuss it a little bit more, but that is the Le 5A7 Hobo. I think that this bag is beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. It's available in a variety of different leathers and the prices range from $19.90 for their smooth leather to $35.50 for their lizard. If I'm not mistaken, it's also available in a variety of different colors. And I think that this bag is gorgeous. I love the simplicity. I love that it's a hobo style. I don't have I don't have very many hobos in my collection. So when I saw it on the website, I just, I thought it was gorgeous. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. I haven't really seen too much about it, so I don't know when it was released. Maybe it's been out for a while and I've been living under a rock. I have no idea. Uh, but for those of you that do have this bag, or if you're also looking at it, let us know some, let us know some details in the, in the comment section down below. Uh, I really like it in the smooth leather in the black, I think it's gorgeous. And I think it has a pretty good price point coming in at $19.90 as I mentioned previously, because you do have the smooth leather on the exterior and then you have the leather lining, which I think is great. And uh, of course I do prefer Saint Laurent's pebbled leather and uh, pebbled leather in general. I think it's I mean, it's literally indestructible, <laughs> at least with the items that I have in my collection. But I'm very curious about the smooth leather. I think it looks beautiful, especially with that hardware. I do wonder, however, on the uh, on the strap part. I wonder if that part of the uh, of the shoulder strap might end up getting caught 
in, in my hair. I think this bag is absolutely gorgeous and I turn to you. For any of you that do have this bag or have tried it on in the boutique, let us know some details on the comment section down below. Next question, if you were able to get the toiletry 19 and 26 now, would you buy both or which one would you prefer over the other? All right, so if I was able to buy the Louis Vuitton toiletry 19 and 26 now, I definitely wouldn't buy both. I would end up going for the 19. I love this size. To me, it is perfect, especially for how I incorporate it into my lifestyle. I love using it in my medium to large size handbags for a catch-all or as a cosmetics case. I think that it is absolutely perfect. Now the 26, I, I definitely appreciate it from afar. And uh, I learned the hard way that I am not a clutch type of person because uh, I've had it three different times and all three times I ended up selling it. And the funny thing is, is that every time I would buy it, I always thought, okay, I'm gonna use it as a clutch. I tried to use it as a clutch, didn't work out, I sold it. Then I'd get it again, I'm like, you know what, this time I am gonna use it as a clutch <laughs> and it didn't work out. So obviously I ended up getting rid of all of them. Of course, I know that nowadays there are organized Organizers that have D-rings that uh, allow you to use these pouches as handbags, which I think is amazing. It gives them it gives them that much more versatility. But even then, I still wouldn't end up going for the 26 anymore. For me, I feel like that um, that small leather good is kind of like the pochette Matisse. I've <laughs> I've made my peace with it, and um, I can I can appreciate it from afar. Like I said before, I just don't. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't really do anything for me anymore. But when I see it, I think it's beautiful. Just not for me anymore. Uh, and one of the things that I always griped about when it came down to the 26 was the was the height that it had because of course these guys aren't they're not really really wide right but you can still get away with carrying a lot in here but with the 26 I always felt that whenever I would use it I would place my items inside and I felt like I'd always end up having to put them on top of each other so sometimes I would end up having to move the stuff on top in order to get to the item down below. Um, I don't know, but it happened to me various times and that also just kind of drove me, <laughs> it drove me up the wall. I don't know if you guys have experienced that as well with the, with the 26, but I still think that it's great. I still think that it's beautiful. And the fact that again, you're able to add a little bit more to it and be able to use it as more than a toiletry pouch, I think is fantastic. But uh, this guy, this guy right here for me, absolutely takes the cake. And the last question, do you create special videos for Christmas? Unfortunately, I do not. I do have a holiday-esque type of video coming up later on this week. At least I'm gonna try to do it later on this week. But as far as full-blown Christmas videos or December vlogging and Christmas vlogging and things like that, I do not. And it really comes down to time. I wish that I had more time to do it and be able to create more videos for you guys, um, but, uh, but I don't. And my hat's off to anybody. It doesn't necessarily have to be for Christmas, but anybody that does the daily vlogging, because that that is just crazy. So for any of you guys that do watch daily vloggers, give them some extra love because putting out those videos every day can definitely be stressful. But um, yeah, I just wish I had more time to be able to, to do that. And in all honesty, when it comes to Christmas, I usually for the last, I'd say maybe four or five years, of course not last year, but uh, before that I always ended up taking the last week to two weeks off um, off of filming for the month of December. And uh, that's because I do have family flying in for the holidays and I don't see them very often. So uh, I try to spend as much time with them as I possibly can. But I will try to, I have some fun videos planned for December. Uh, I'm gonna try my hardest to cram them <laughs> in like the first two weeks. Uh, and then I'll be back to filming uh, in January. But no, unfortunately, no, uh, no dedicated Christmas videos from this chick. Now I did wanna end this video with some eye candy. I get a lot of questions on the handbags that I have in my background because I do try to switch them out, but for the most part, they are the same ones, just in different spots. I do get pretty lazy. Uh, but I got a lot of questions on my last Q&A video on this beauty right here. This is the Pollen number no. nine. I don't have a dedicated video to it. I don't have an unboxing or anything like that. I did talk about this bag briefly during my uh, 
bags that I got during my time away from YouTube. I will put that at the end of this video if you guys want to check it out. But I've had this bag for about, I want to say maybe nine to 10 months. And uh, Pauline was very gracious and they sent me this bag in the color camel and they also sent it to me in black. Uh, out of both of these, I end up using the camel the most. And I have to be honest with you, out of all of my Pauline bags, this is by far my favorite. It gave the number seven a run for its money and I just absolutely love the silhouette. I love the color. This leather is incredible. You guys have heard me say that many of times when it comes to Pauline. So I really do want to do uh, a video on this because like I said before, I don't have a dedicated video. So let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing a review on this. I'm actually looking at buying another Pauline handbag and uh, it was released, I want to say three or four months ago and it's called Umi. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Uh, but it retails for $3.90 and it's available in a variety of different colors. I love the silhouette uh, because it does have a longer strap so that way you can use it crossbody. But the strap is also adjustable so you can use it as a hobo. So I've been looking at that one in the color chalk. No surprise, right? <laughs> no surprise. And right now uh, they have free shipping. So there are no duties that you have to pay and there's no tax. So it would be an even $3.90. And it's the same type of leather that the number nine has. I think I might end up pulling the trigger on that bag today. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. But anywho, that does it for our Q&A video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope I was able to answer your questions. And like I said in the last video, I will be doing these Q&As twice a month. So please leave your questions for our next video on the comment section down below. But I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.